My name is Yasser and I'm from Afghanistan. My question is, how can we protect ourselves from zina? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Al-Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 32, وَلَا تَقْرَبُ الزِّنَا إِنَّهُ كَانَ فَاحِشَةً وَسَاءَ سَبِيلًا And do not come close to adultery, for it is an evil opening towards other evils. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse of the glorious Quran in Surah Al-Isra chapter number 17 verse number 32 He is telling us that do not come close to adultery Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse He is going a step further and He is telling us do not come close to adultery Leave aside committing adultery which is a grave major sin So all the things that lead to adultery we should see to it that we stay away from it All the things that lead to zina we should see to it that we stay away from it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 208. O oh, you who believe, enter into Islam wholeheartedly. الشيطان, and do not follow the footsteps of the devil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse of the glorious Quran, he's telling us, do not follow the footsteps of the devil. Leave aside following the devil, which is a great evil. Islam takes utmost precaution that and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly tells us, do not follow the footsteps of the devil. So all the things that lead to haram, all the things that lead to anything that is haram, we should stay away from it. Now how can we protect ourselves from zina, which is a major sin? And in fact, according to Imam al-Dahabi, he writes in his book Al-Kabair, The 70 Major Sins, he says that zina, it is the 10th major sin in Islam. So how do we protect ourselves? How do we protect ourselves from this major sin of zina? Inshallah, I will discuss 11 ways in order to protect ourselves from zina. The first is that we should use the social media appropriately and we should not misuse the social media. Today's social media, it is very prevalent. Whether it be YouTube, whether it be Facebook, whether it be Instagram, whether it be Twitter, etc. And majority of the people, when they use social media, they end up involving in something that is haram. For example, Facebook. Many people, they have a profile on Facebook. And while they use Facebook, they involve in something that is haram. We find many people, unfortunately, many men who have profiles on Facebook, they befriend a girl. The same is the case with the sisters, unfortunately. Many of the women, who have a profile on Facebook, they befriend a male. And they think that it is mere friendship. But this, these are khutwat shaitan These are the footsteps of the devil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا خُطُوَاتِ shaitan Do not follow the footsteps of the devil. Initially, it starts with friendship. Then a person starts communicating with the person of the opposite gender. Initially, it starts with being a mere friend with a person of the opposite gender on Facebook, then you start communicating with the person, you start sending the person a message, and then you want to get close to the person, you meet the person of the opposite gender, you want to go for coffee, you want to go for dinner, and then eventually a person falls into this heinous sin of sinner. It is very important that we use the social media in the halal way. Social media, it has its pros and its cons. And today, there is a lot of fitna that is available on the social media. So we should stay away from this fitna. The second way in order to protect ourselves from zina is to avoid watching movies. And I am referring to the Hollywood and the Bollywood movies. We find many Muslims, unfortunately, they spend hours watching Hollywood and Bollywood movies. And in majority of these movies, there are haram things that are involved, whether it be intermingling of the opposite gender, whether it be women appearing in these movies in obscene and in immodest clothes. So we should see to it that we do not while away our time and we do not waste our time in watching movies. And what happens is a person watches a movie and he wants to implement this in real life. Many a times in the movies, many things are fictitious and unreal. And people, they want to implement these things in real life. And people think that it is a mere movie. What is the problem if I'm watching some movie and there is certain intermingling 
and certain women they are not dressed in the hijab or they are dressed immodestly it is a mere movie but we do not realize that this has an impact on our mind the third way in order to protect ourselves from zina is to avoid looking at obscene and immodest pictures in the magazines and we find today in the magazines that it is very common that you will find pictures of women you will find pictures of immodest women all of this it is very common in most of the magazines today so whenever we come across such a picture we should immediately flip the page and we should not continue watching at these images and certain magazines are known to have pictures of women who are dressed immodestly so we should not read these magazines at all we find in the magazines that there are advertisements for example of a car invariably in the ad you will find a woman who's dressed immodestly in the magazines you may have an advertisement of a furniture invariably in that you will find a woman what is the percentage of women who drive car it is very less as compared to men but invariably in an ad of a car you will find a woman the fourth way in order to protect ourselves from zina is to avoid reading newspapers which have immodest pictures in it we find this in the newspapers as well that there are ads of women there are ads which promote haram things we should avoid reading such newspapers and even if we are reading any daily newspaper and if we come across certain advertisements which promote something that is haram or in which there is a woman who is dressed immodestly we should immediately flip the page and we should not continue watching this the fifth way in order to protect ourselves from zina is that we should be in the company of good and righteous friends a man should have good friends the brothers they should have good friends and the sisters they should have good friends and we should only keep friends of the same gender and at the same time we should see to it that we do not have friends who are away from the teachings of islam we should have good and righteous friends we should not have friends who are involved in haram relationships this is very important the sixth way in order to protect ourselves from zina is that we should have friends only of the same gender we should not have friends of the opposite gender and we find that today it is very common many men unfortunately they have girlfriends when many women unfortunately they have boyfriends and they think that it is okay this totally is against the teachings of islam and all of these are khutwat shaitan these are the footsteps of the devil so we should not follow the footsteps of the devil and anything that leads to zina we should see to it that we abstain from such a thing the seventh way in order to protect ourselves from zina is that we should get married a person should get married the moment he is capable of getting married our beloved prophet muhammad peace be upon him said ya ma'ashar ash-shabab man istata'a minkum al-ba'ata falyatazawwaj oh young people who so ever amongst you is able to get married he should get married so those young men who have the capability of getting married they should get married as soon as possible unfortunately in today's time zina has become very common and rampant and very easy and unfortunately people have made marriage very difficult and we find those people who are involved in haram relationships they have problems of depression they do not lead a life of peace and they constantly are depressed and they are in remorse what is the reason because they are not following the commandments of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are not following the commandment of our beloved prophet muhammad peace be upon him wherein he said that we should get married so if a person is capable of getting married he should get married as soon as possible the eighth way in order to protect ourselves from zina is that if a person cannot get married then he should fast as our beloved prophet muhammad peace be upon him said that the one who cannot get married then he should fast for it will be a protection for him the ninth way in order to protect ourselves from zina is to be regular as far as the salah is concerned especially the five daily prayer 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran in Surah Al-Ankabut, chapter number 29, verse number 45. Utlu ma uhiya ilayka min al-kitab wa aqim al-salah inna salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. Recite from the book what is revealed to thee and establish regular prayer for prayer restrains from shameful and immoral deeds. The more we offer our salah with khushu and with khudu, we will find peace and tranquility. And it will be a shield for us, a protection for us against the evil, against sins. Besides being regular as far as the five daily prayer are concerned, we should see to it that we offer the tahajjud prayer on a regular basis as well. We should be regular as far as the Qiyamul Layl is concerned and we should try our level best that we are regular as far as the other Sunnah prayer are concerned as well. The Sunnah Al-Mu'akkada and the Sunnah Ghair Al-Mu'akkada. So we should see to it that we offer the five daily prayer on a regular basis and we do not miss any one of the five daily prayer because this is compulsory upon every Muslim. And if we are regular as far as the five daily prayer are concerned, we will see the difference in our life. The Salah, it acts as a shield, as a protection from sins. So if we offer Salah with proper concentration and with dedication, it will protect us from sins. The tenth way in order to protect ourselves from Zina is to be connected to the glorious Quran. The more we read the glorious Quran on a regular basis, it will keep us on the Surat al-Mustaqeem, that is the straight path, and it will prevent us from committing sins. We should be connected to the glorious Quran. We should read the glorious Quran on a daily basis. We should read the glorious Quran along with the translation and ponder upon the meaning of what we are reciting. The more we are connected to the glorious Quran, the more we will find peace, tranquility and satisfaction in our lives. And the 11th way in order to protect ourselves from zina is to know regarding the punishment of zina in this world as well as the next. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran in Surah Al-Nur chapter number 24 verse number 2. As for the one guilty of adultery or fornication, flog each of them a hundred lashes. There is a prescribed punishment for the person who commits zina. This is how heinous this crime of zina is. Unfortunately, many of us, we take this sin very lightly and we do not realize the things that lead to zina. That's the reason we should safeguard ourselves and we should protect ourselves from all the things that lead to zina. And we should not follow the footsteps of the devil. Leave aside following the devil, which is a great evil. We should not even follow the footsteps of the devil. And Satan, he uses different techniques in order to tempt different human beings. That reminds me of an incident of a person who was an Abid, who was a worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he was known in the society to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This person, he was known for his obedience, for his worship, for his ibadah. Everyone knew him as a righteous person, as a person who is consistent as far as his salah, as far as his fasting, as far as his ibadah is concerned. One day, there is a family that wants to travel away from the town in which this Abid, in which this worshipper is staying. And they want to leave their daughter behind. And they go to this Abid, this worshipper, and they tell him that we want to keep our daughter with you because we know that you are a righteous person and you will take care of her. Now this Abid, he was staying alone in his house. So immediately he says, Audhu Billah, I seek refuge in Allah. How can this unknown woman who is not a mehram to me stay with me? I am staying alone in my house. He immediately refuses. But then Satan comes and tempts him and tells him that what is the problem? What you can do is you can keep this sister in the house besides your house and there is no problem in it. She is not staying in the same house. So he agrees and he keeps this sister in the house besides his house. A few days pass and the Satan has already started his campaign of taking this Abid worshipper away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now he tells this Abid, this worshipper, that this woman, she's staying alone in the house besides you. Why don't you take her in your house and keep her in a separate room? You will not be staying in the same room with her. 
at least you can take care of her. She is a good Muslim. You need to take care of a Muslim sister. So the Sahabid, he thinks, okay, there is no problem. I am staying in one room. She is staying in another room. And he takes and he welcomes the sister in his house. A few days pass. Satan tempts this Habid, this worshipper. And he tells him that you need to know this sister better. You need to take care of her. You need to serve her. Why don't you sometimes call her inside your room and you take care of her. You give her food, you give her water, etc. So this Habid, he agrees and he takes this sister inside his room. And then Satan keeps on tempting him slowly and gradually. And he keeps getting closer to this sister. He ends up talking unnecessarily to the sister. And then eventually Satan tempts him to commit this major sin of zina. And he commits this major sin of zina. Now when the people, they return back, they realize that this person, he has committed zina with the sister. And he is taken to the court of law. And he is about to be given his punishment for zina. Now this person he is caught. Now Satan does not end with his temptation here. But Satan, he continues tempting this person. And he traps this Habit in such a way wherein this Habit he commits a sin which he would not have imagined committing it when a few days back. So Satan comes to this person, to this habit, and he tells him that I am the one who has put you into this problem and I am the only one who can remove you from this problem. But I have one condition. So the habit, he says what? Satan tells him that bow down to me. And this habit, who was known to be a worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he bows down to Iblis. He bows down to Satan and he commits the biggest sin in Islam. And Satan tells him that thank you very much. You have been such a good friend. And he leaves him. This is a, an exact and a precise example of Khutwat al-Shaytan, the footsteps of the devil. Satan did not come to this Abid and tell him directly, commit zina. He knew that this Abid was a strong worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, was a person who used to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regularly. So slowly and gradually he tempted him. And eventually this Abid ended up committing zina and after that, he even committed shirk, wherein he bowed down to Iblis. So we should always take utmost precaution that we do not follow the footsteps of the devil. Anything that leads to any major sin, we should stay away from it. And a true believer, he is always on his toes. And anything that leads to any sin, a believer always stays away from such things. So I would request all the brothers and sisters that to ponder over these 11 steps, these 11 ways that I have mentioned and inshallah it will help an individual and it will protect an individual from this major sin of sinner. I hope that answers your question.